As of this morning, Tales of Gore appears to have made back its licensing fee money. And considering everything else is pretty much paid for by the Kickstarter, it seems that this was a good investment and there was there was that desire to have this game out there that I hoped there would be. So that seems like a cause for celebration. You've got to know, of course, that going into this project, even even right from the start, which is three years ago now, it shouldn't have taken that long. We'll get into that in a bit, but even going into it, I knew that Gore had this kind of straight-to-video reputation. My name is Cabot. Cabot? Cabot! 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 Cabot? And I knew that if people didn't know it from those awful, awful films, then they would know it from there was a couple of couple of scandals um, really nothing statistically significant but obviously tabloids played it up so if people didn't know gore from the shit films they would know it from the shit behavior of a tiny number of people so that was always kind of a worry and this was back in 2014 this was before the recent drupal scandal um, with, the, with the guy involved with that being into the whole Korean thing in the form of consensual BDSM play and so on and getting kicked out and a whole fuss around that. Uh, a lot of hypocritical fuss on the part of a lot of people. So going into it, I was aware of all this. Um, but the thing about Gore is that it is essentially pulp fiction. It doesn't really live up to this terrible reputation that it has if you actually read the books. There is a lot of lecturing and philosophizing and so on, but there's also a fantastic world and a, a really good exercise in, in world building. And this series of books always meant, uh, meant a lot to me um, for, for various reasons, uh, as I'm sure a lot of trash fiction means a lot to a lot of other people. I mean, just look at how people love Tarzan or John Carter of Mars or Conan or anything. These were all trash fiction um, in the kind of generations pre preceding Gore, but people love them. They have this massive and far-reaching effect on science fiction as a whole, fantasy as a whole, and in its own way Gore isn't really that different. I mean it was it was massive through the 60s and 70s and the online community, the online fan base is still enormous. So I was always reassured that if I loved this series, and if so many other people clearly loved this series as well, that the, this bad side, this kind of camp trash fiction side, wouldn't necessarily detract from it. And personally, you know, I don't regard Gore particularly as trash fiction. I mean, it's not the not the best in the world, but it's it's enjoyable, and that's the main most important thing. But personally, I love trash fiction. I love those old straight-to-video '80s films, whether it's the barbarian ones or the atrocious post-apocalyptic ones or you know the imitations of, of other successful films or whatever uh, yeah I, I love I love all that stuff I love the the kind of trash novels from the same kind of period especially the post-apocalyptic ones the kind of excitement and adventure of just throwing all kinds of ideas at the wall and, and seeing what sticks and gore is very much a, a synthesis of just hurling ideas together and seeing what what happened and it came out with something that I think is appealing and challenging and adventurous and good in its own way so I just had to do the start I just I'd, I'd always loved the books uh, they've been an influence on my gaming and various other aspects of my life in one way or another for a long time and I just took the punt uh, wrote to Norman's agent and asked and he was up up for it so um, that's that's how we got the license that's how it started out. I wrote down some, some basic ideas, showed how we would go about doing it and so on, and then set up the Indiegogo and uh, we were away to raise funds.
fundraising wasn't too difficult for Gore. There was this existing fan base out there, plus my existing gaming fan base. Not to say that it wasn't some trouble. It's interesting looking back that the release of the game hasn't been met with anything like the same degree of vitriol and hatred that the announcement of the fundraiser was. I think there was a lot more effort to kind of sabotage the fundraiser or try and get it pulled in some way. Uh, when all this started three years ago, then there has been reaction to it coming out. Um, I took some precautions uh, against that by talking to and chatting with you know, people involved on various platforms to make sure that it was okay and wasn't going to get pulled or otherwise fucked with in any way. So, you know, I kind of preempted uh, this time around any, any kind of trouble, but even so, it's been interesting that there was just so much more vitriol and nastiness at the start than there is now at the end. Yeah, you know, I've had a couple of people come at me, but, but nothing too serious. Uh, whether that's just because we completely don't move in the same circles anymore and they've got me blocked or whatever. I don't know, but it's still interesting. Another hurdle we had to overcome was that there is a lot of suspicion uh, within the various Korean communities about the way that they get treated by outsiders. And they definitely saw me as a bit of an outsider. You know, they didn't believe necessarily that I had the license to, to make the game. There's been problems with licensed Korean properties before, whether it's the films having fuck all to do with the books, or a comic project that never really took off and seemed to disappear. And so there, were, there was a lot of suspicion there, plus a lot of people try to sensationalise the Korean roleplay or BDSM communities, and so on. So there was a lot, a lot of suspicion and worry to overcome there, a lot of sabotage and so on, but we did finally uh, make the funding and the main purpose of that funding was to hire the artist that I wanted, um, Michael Manning. Uh, he's a rather renowned uh, fetish artist who does really, really striking black and white artwork. And I wanted to use him for everything. I wanted to use him for the, for the, for the whole book because he has this really striking art style and I was trying to establish a kind of unified visual look to the game, a, a, a consistent vision, a consistent starting point, to make it really stand out artistically in a way that I don't think has particularly been done since perhaps Planescape or, or Dark Sun, they had that kind of consistency of vision. So that was the kind of thing I, I was aiming for by, by using him, and obviously as a higher end artist than a lot of game companies, particularly small game companies, uh, tend to use, that was very expensive and that's where the, the majority of the, of the crowdfunding went. And I, I think it turned out well, though it was, as it turned out, the, the main source of the delay on getting everything out. So yeah, we, we, wrapped, we wrapped the funding um, and I was able to, to pay for the art and go into to full-on development. So up until that point, everything was going fairly smoothly. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a fan in possession of a cool fandom must be in want of something to complain about. And this was very much on my mind as I set about researching Gore. Now, uh, you would think writing such a game, the main thing to do would be to read the books and make extensive notes from the books and then use those upon which to base your game. Now, unfortunately, in approaching Gore, there was a long period in which it was not being published. And the online community kind of took it and made it its own without permission, role played a lot. If you search Gore or Gorean in Google, you will find page after page after page of lore that people have made up, of habits and so on that people have made up. So I had to appeal to the hardcore by the book community, I had to be respectful to the source. But I also had to take into account the ownership that people have taken of Gore, how they've interpreted it for themselves, how they've kept it going, because that's something that's worthy of respect. But at the same time, fans can be absolute cunts. 
This is something I ran into when I was working on the SLA Industries line in that people have really strong personal ideas from their own interpretations of the material, especially when you haven't been putting out material and supporting a line for a long time. So when you come along and you do something, whatever you do is going to piss somebody off. They're going to have their own spin and they're not necessarily going to react well to any particular spin or interpretation you've put on it. So that was a concern, as was this whole hyper PC environment in which we, we find ourselves. Now, personally, I don't give that much of a fuck uh, what those kinds of people think, ex except to the extent in which it can, it can harm the commercial viability and reputation of, of people involved, undeservedly. But, you know, I wanted to do the best by, by Norman, by his agent, by the fans, by the books. So I felt it was important to try and not compromise with, but contextualize the Gore books and hopefully address some of the misconceptions and so on that people had about them. Um, and so far, that's one of the few complaints that I have received about the books is that I spent too much time on that, contextualizing the books and, and, and talking about these mis misconceptions and trying to laboriously explain the concept of fiction to people that seem to have, have problems understanding it. But that was, uh, that was a big problem through development, was trying to find a balance between all these different perspectives and, and my own. Hopefully I managed to find that, and mostly I've done that by taking an advisory tone in a lot of things and just kind of presenting the world as is otherwise for people to then take on and do what they want with you know I'm not trying to dictate and set down that this is how gore is that's up to the writer ultimately and people could interpret that however they want within their own circles so you know that's that's not up to me but I did want to provide a kind of reference point that could bring all these groups together but it but in the end you know it's got to come down to my interpretation and it doesn't help that there's some contradictions within the material or that particularly in the later books so much of the writing is from the kind of internal perspective of, of Tal Kabot so it, it's not objective you can't you can't really use that as a basis upon which to describe the world or, or the game because it's all his own interpretations. I got around that to an extent in the world book by presenting my own subjective viewpoint. Uh, a man of earth who'd been taken to Gore to act as a kind of record keeper and writer, the supposed writer of this encyclopedia, and uh, giving his perspective, which was a way of inserting my interpretation onto the material in a way that didn't kind of set it in stone because that like Gabot's opinion is just this whole yeah subjective viewpoint. In terms of system I decided to go with the open d6 system for a number of reasons. The d6 system was the system that powered the original West End game Star Wars game that for a huge number of people was a very effective and graspable entry level game in, into the world of role playing. And I'm anticipating that quite a few of these online role players, freeform role players and other members of various Korean communities who might pick up these books will need a kind of introduction into at least the mechanical side of role-playing, that they don't necessarily encounter the other places they play, like Second Life or web forums or web chats or IRC or whatever else it is, is that, they, that, they, that they get up to things. Um, so I wanted it to be accessible, but I also wanted it to have a certain degree of depth for longer-term or more experienced role-players. So the, the D6 system seemed like a good way to go about that. At the, at the time I started all this, I'd already developed a couple of game ideas using the D6 system and I tweaked it a bit here and there. I also feel that it's an expandable system so that as I bring out supplements, I don't want to make them just adventures because there's not that much value um, in just a pure adventure. So if I supplement the rules, I can then make those supplementary books more worthwhile to people uh, by giving them more, more more scope to be applied and I can expand the rules for the people who want more more crunch, more, more depth to the rules. 
Another big reason for choosing the D6 system is that it's, uh, it's very supportive and traditional of the idea of templates in that you can pick out a character, customize it and get down to play right away. With Gore's strict cast system, that's just kind of tailor-made for, for templates. So you, you, you can say, all right, I'm going to play a warrior. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm good to go. You know, if, if you don't want to give it that much that much depth. So, you know, it, it's it's kind of instant pick up and play or near instant in that way. That was another a big reason for choosing that system. And of course, six-sided dice are the easiest ones for people to get hold of, which is another thing to think about. And uh, when it comes to dice rolling programs or scripts, six-sided dice are the most widely available ones that there are. So again, these were these were all good reasons because I and I anticipate people using these books to supplement or guide their online play as well. So I wanted to keep it as kind of accessible as possible in that way. Some people genuinely think that Gore is in some way cursed. There's the abandoned comics project. There's the problems with the films. There's the way that the books have been withdrawn from sale and so on under, under various campaigns. Um, sabotage that I suffered and the problems that we suffered. I, yeah, maybe there's something to that. No, I don't actually believe that. I just think it's a controversial and difficult project and people have been unlucky and we were no exception. Almost immediately, uh, both myself and my business partner had health problems. I had a couple of fairly severe bouts of depression uh, which I had warned about and accounted for in the in the Kickstarter but even so I finished the the documentation that would go on to become the books yeah with reasonable rapidity um, you know and the the Indiegogo closed closed out with slightly above the amount of money that we that we said we needed um, the art began to roll in and then everything started to go wrong now, obviously I don't want to intrude on anyone's privacy or anything but I think there's a there's a lesson to be learned here in not putting all your eggs in one basket because just one thing after another went wrong for the artist um, and that is essentially what, what ended up making it take as, as long as it has. And all the while I was going spare because you can't tell people things that are going wrong in someone's personal life. You just have to give this kind of vague there's there's problems they're they're legitimate we just need to hang on and, and wait but then that you know after a while that starts to sound like an excuse it wasn't <laughs> there really were problems uh that i had problems my business partner had problems the artist had problems it was just we were just incredibly unlucky but particularly the artist and i you know i still can't go into it it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair um but it just dragged on and on and on and I was amazed that more people weren't angry at me. I suppose at this point lots of people are very used to crowdfunding things going wrong or not delivering at all. I was always going to deliver something no, ma no matter what. Whatever I had, whatever art I'd managed to get, I would have put into books and sent out at least to the backers so that they would have had what they paid for. But even so, it, it was a it was a huge stress and probably contributed to one of those depression breakdowns that it just this wasn't delivering. I wanted it to. I have been disappointed by screwed up projects myself in the past. I don't want to be one of those guys. And th and this taking so long really worried me that people would lose faith in me for future projects and so on because I'm already planning my next uh, crowdfunded venture that hopefully will go well and won't run into these problems so yeah that was that was a huge huge issue and uh, Michael practically worked himself to death over the last few weeks that, before we released getting those those last pieces of art out and um, kudos to him for, for doing so but that's what finally let us go ahead it should have been out within a year it should have been out somewhere around August, September 2015. Instead, here we are, 2017. But there was just nothing to be done, but I can't tell anybody. Um, and I'm really worried about that moving moving forward, whether that's going to undermine any future attempts to, to do this. But hopefully 
my tenacity and commitment will um, will prove to people that that's still yeah I'm still someone who's worth worth backing because I will in the end deliver but we shall see and now in this final furlong we've had all kinds of problems as well uh, the print on demand has been an absolute son of a bitch to set up every time I uploaded the files and we're talking hundreds of meg here on a rather slow connection uh, the online processor just choked on the files uh, and, and couldn't process them. In the end what I had to do was I had to chop up the files into smaller sections though it doesn't seem to be a, a file size problem so I had to chop them all into sections, upload them, get them through the processor, download them again, stitch all those files back together and then upload them again. Uh, that took Friday, Saturday, all the way through till Sunday night uh, with, with virtually no sleep trying to get that done. So hopefully at the end of all that all that process the, uh, the, the print on demand files will be okay. I'm just waiting on proofs and provided they're all right, you know, you know acceptable even, uh, they'll be going out. I hope they look great because the art does look great. I'm hopefully going to do like a, like a photo book with uh, Michael's art in it separately and that, that is a separate PDF uh, for, for people to download as well so they can see the art at full, full scale and really you know, see, the, see the goods when it comes to that. In the end I think everything's come together pretty well. We've only been on sale, well, not long at all, and it seems like we've made the the money, the license cost back, and everything else was was pretty much covered by the Kickstarter. So from this point on, pretty much, uh, we're making money. So uh, hopefully, a renewal of the license won't cost quite as much, and it will continue to be worth you know carrying on, providing supplementary material and, and so on into into the future. Um, so that was that was good. I think my artistic goal uh, in using Michael for the for the work, I think that was met. I think we have a very distinctive and visually appealing book uh, with his interpretations of things in it. So that went well. I think the system is is the right match, um, and I know people aren't going to be afraid of tweaking here and there if if they need to. So you know that that's not an issue. Yeah, I think it's 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 come together well and so far the only sort of vicious nastiness that I've been on the receiving end of has been actually f mostly from people who aren't even involved in the role-playing community um, nobody who I think has actually read the books uh, one person involved in the role-playing community who was trying to warn others about it and got shot down we seem to have coincided with a certain amount of pushback against the kind of hyper PC stuff that I was worried about um, and the kind of stuff that's plagued Norman much of his career since the 70s I suppose at least in terms of his authorship so yeah we seem to be riding the crest of a wave on that and there's a whole kind of pulp revival thing going on in, in science fiction so we seem to have hit a, a good time to, to launch this game and hopefully word of mouth and the efforts that I'm making to, to advertise will carry it to these people and these same kind of devoted fans that have kept this franchise going for so long uh, will hopefully latch onto this game and accept it and take it on and, and use it themselves hopefully so and, and, ho and hopefully you know sort of sticking to my guns and, and getting this game out in spite of all the problems that we've had has proved that I will deliver and uh, hopefully my next my next projects if I crowdfund them will still be met even though a lot of people are souring to, to crowdfunding lately we shall see I hope that gives you some kind of insight into the process uh, feel free to ask me questions if you have a podcast or a stream or anything that you'd like me to be on to talk about this project or the broader issues around this project uh, I'm completely willing to haul myself out to, to sell this game to people so yeah just ask. Zang.